Yeah, certainly. Like I, I guess sort of like that that time and space and and um, association certainly kind of connects me with that and. Yeah, and I, I guess that this, in terms of time and space, again, just reinforcing that idea that this, you know, people are kind of asking me, oh, you know, when's Chico's Angel finished? You know, when are we going to get to see it finished and stuff like that? And I actually have no desire really to, you know, fast pace it and finish this off. This is something definitely sort of it has a certain amount of therapy, therapeutic value for me. I come out here and I might do an hour or two a week. I try and come back to it quite often. I kind of, you know, I think it's important to sort of continue on that process and that making and that experience of, of um, manipulation and, and of this material. Um, but um, yeah, I, I guess for finished pieces, I, I like to see things finished because I think it's really important to, to actually finish a piece totally so that then you can sort of move on with the other one. If it's, if you never finish your piece, then uh, it's really hard to sort of respond to it and reflect on it in terms of getting another idea or another surface quality without fully exploring and it sort of, yeah, revealing that and sitting with it for a while. For me, um, you know, a piece won't really communicate all of its values straight away. So that idea of sitting with a piece and contemplating uh, is, is a really important thing for me. So I am not worried about the cracks and the imperfections in this work. Uh, you know, a lot of people are into sort of that fine, smooth surface, crack free, uh, sort of concept or idea for me the cracking it's it kind of represents the flaws in all of us all of the vulnerabilities and and places of navigation so whether it be you know a scarification a mark on the body or whether it be uh, you know, it's a, it's a mark in history that we kind of wear these sort of marks. Um, so I see it as sort of, uh, as body marking as well, very much so. Um, How would you like other people to experience this? Um... I think just the idea of uh, of contemplation. I think that uh, I think that I would like people to experience it from all aspects. Uh, whether you're, you know, in a wheelchair at this height, or whether you actually are able to physically come up and engage in the space, you know, kind of be almost sort of huddled in the space. Um, for me, it's a very sort of body interactive. It's certainly a attack, like that idea of having a do not touch sort of sign on it is really quite foreign to me. So I really like that idea of, of texture, surface, smell, that sensory sort of, especially that body sensory. I think with a piece of wood this size, I mean, I've never seen a, a piece of red cedar this size in my life. I'm 43, I work with wood, I've worked with all, wood all my life. My father and mother have worked with wood, and I've had lots of friends and associates working with wood, but I've never actually, I guess, had the experience or seen a piece of wood that uh, is this sort of size. So I think of it as a massive privilege and probably a one-off opportunity to sort of yeah, explore this. But in terms of how people would interact with it, I think that um, I think with that title, I think the title, you know, it's going to be suggestive enough, but ambiguous enough um, that people in that title would sort of be, you know, drawn in to be engaged with it. But certainly that the body confrontation, where it's this 
mass of wood that presents itself to you in this type of form, I think is a fairly unusual experience where, you know, we kind of got this sort of almost living, sort of breathing, decaying, sort of, you know, material here that um, is quite different to, say, rock or concrete or plaster or, or some other material. There's, um, I've definitely got an association and a, and a love and a passion for wood and, uh, you know, with all of its layering and um, textures and facets and it's, um, it's very sort of, um, for me, it's sort of, it's depository in the sense that it sort of adds another layer as it grows in its growing state and uh, so now I'm sort of almost revealing or cutting through some of those layers to reveal those, yeah, that, those histories. So I really like, you know, that, that, that idea of layering and, you know, that winter, summer, winter, summer, winter, summer growth and that idea, it's a little bit like that kind of, that, that storytelling of ice, you know, mm. that yeah, I can tell where there was a wet year, where there was a dry year, uh, whether it was a prolonged wet year, just through the growth rings of the timber. So obviously the larger the growth, the more, the better the conditions, hence the reason why you get compact grain growth in the winter when it's slow growing, and then you get a large growth in the summer, then a smaller growth in the winter, and that's, that, that's the year or the layering idea of um, the history and the actual environment that we're sort of, you know, exposed to.